Okay, <clears throat> the story of my life, by Robert Benson. I, Robert H. Benson, was born February 28, 1927, in the parsonage of the West Lenox Baptist Church, the second son of Harry and Francis Phillips Benson. According to an entry in my mother's diary, I arrived at 6 a.m. on a Monday morning weighing in at eight and three-fourths pounds. My parents had moved into the parsonage when they were married. When they were married, the parsonage <laughs> being empty, as a minister lived in the area and commuted. The parsonage is still in use today, and now is electricity, running water, and even indoor plumbing. My brother Howard was also born there, June 3rd, 1925. Howard and I attended the Acre Lake School, one of many one-room schools in Lenox Township. This building, building was converted to a home and still continues to be used as one. Today in 2008, we hear, things have not been so bad since the Great Depression. Well, those were the years I grew up in. We didn't know we were poor. Both grandparents had farms. Dad worked for his father in a sawmill who had several other employees. There were times when Grandpa could not meet his payroll. But no one quit. Even the promise of pay was better than nothing. Every family raised a pig, had chickens, a cow, and grew a garden. I thought things were great. I had a little bank with a slot in the top to put coins in. Periodically, we would take the bank to up on National Bar Bank. They would open it and remove the coins and deposit them in an interest-bearing account. I wish I still had the bank. I'm sure the antique value would be more than the few coins I put in it. 1937, Grandpa moved the mill to Jackson Township. Dad bought a house and we moved up the house you call Great Grandpa's house. I lived there until I was married in 1949. Prior to this, the mill was moved to the location where the timber had been purchased. So Grandpa Fred would move his family and crew from place to place. Some of these moves were in New York State, Bradford County, Tunkhannock area, and places in between. I went to the Lakeview School for 6th and 7th grades. There was a two-room school. No trace of it remains. Next to the present Mennonite Church, was a Baptist at that time, Howard went to Oakland High School. Howard died of cancer at home on February 14, 1940, in the middle of the famous Valentine's Day blizzard. It was bitter cold with heavy snow and blowing wind for two days. All roads were closed. John Hall brought the undertaker in with a horse and sleigh. I remember standing at the top of the hill looking down toward the Lakeview Road. All you could see were men shoveling. Years later when the blizzard was mentioned, someone would remember shoveling out the hill. The funeral was held in the North Jackson Methodist Church, and many helped shovel that out also. The Lakeview School closed, and I went to Jackson School for eighth grade, then to Tuna Milford for nine through twelve. High school was great. No responsibility, just fun, wonderful life. But there was a war going on. Three of us boys in my class turned, in, turned 18 in February 1945, David Gillat, Stuart Pease, and myself. So we went to Binghamton and enlisted in the Marines for the duration of the national emergency, with the understanding they would not call us until after graduation. Stuart did not pass the physical for the Marines, so he was then drafted into the Army. He was in Italy graduation time. 
Dave and I left for the Marines in June of 1945. Dave and I were in boot camp at Paris Island, South Carolina, when the atom bomb was dropped and the war came to a speedy halt. There was a point system in effect, so those who had been in longest <laughs> <laughs> Those who had been in longest got out first. For the next year or so, I was stationed in Camp Lejeune. Apparently, my name was omitted from a list to go somewhere, so I remained in North Carolina. But my mail went to China. I did not get paid and so forth. Eventually, things caught up and I worked in the discharge office. Great duty until I was discharged. I came home around August 30th, 1946. There was a celebration rodeo thing at the Harford Fairgrounds. Dad wanted to attend, so I went with him. All he talked about was what we would do tomorrow. I wasn't sure I wanted to go to work, but to work I went in the sawmill for the next 20 years. I did not have a car. There were no cars for sale, new or used in 1946, so I was stuck at home. There was an active youth group at church which I attended. One night Joan had a friend staying with her. Another fellow wanted to take that girl out after MYF, so someone had to escort Joan. <coughs> I think I volunteered. Anyhow, this had been going along for over 60 years. I came home from the service and married, as I say, I came home from the service and married the closest available girl. Just before we were married, I bought, I bought a 1937 Plymouth. It was not a very reliable car. Often had to push it to start in cold weather and sometimes in warm weather. But it took us to Virginia and back on a honeymoon. Joan also had a 1936 Chevrolet that had been her father's, but it was not in good shape either. Joan loaned, Dad loaned us his car to go to the hospital when Ellen was born. On April 10, 1949, Joan and I were married in the North Jackson Methodist Church <laughs> by the Reverend Howard Thomas, the minister who married my parents and it fished with Grandpa Phillips. I also joined the Masons that, that year. Ellen was born on August 7, 1950. Weighed in, weighed seven pounds, 12 ounces. 1954, we bought the place where we now live. Paid $6,500 for the house and 70 acres. <coughs> You buy an ungood house, you spend the rest of your life working on it. Living next to Dad and work, we could get by with one vehicle. Money was still scarce, but we could live cheap. Had a big garden, ate four deer one winter. Beef has tasted better ever since. On May 20th, 1963, Scott was born, weighing in at eight pounds, five ounces. By then, Ellen was old enough to ba babysit and was a great help to us. I served 18 years at Jackson Township Supervisor. Three terms, cloud snow for them. Very low paying job, but along with the sawmill and construction job, it kept me busy. <coughs> 19 Sixty-six. I quit the lumber business and went to work on construction. I liked the sawmill, but as Dad was getting older, the equipment was also getting old. It would have taken a lot of money to replace and restart. Uh, I had never been involved in the business, of, business end of things. I thought it might be better to try something else. Got a job on construction at the Blue Ridge High School with Gerard and Pettinato. Had to join the union. Construction paid much better. And I had pretty steady work and continued with the union 
for 15 years. Lots of driving since most of the work was in the Scranton area. In 1968, I broke my arm at work. Bad break. Still have plate and screws in my arm. Helen graduated from high school and started college. And both my mother and Joan's grandmother died. I also quit smoking and had my teeth pulled. Some year, huh? In 1981, I quit construction. Scott would not, would not go to college, so we decided we could get by on less pay than his new job. The sewage plant, <coughs> the sewage plant operator, sewage plant operation required a licensed operator. The retiring operator did not have a license. I took the test as soon as possible, passed the exam, and received a certificate to operate the plant, then received a raise in pay. Still only paid about what a and what construction plant paid, but had better benefit and shorter drive to work. It was also a much easier job. After 10 years, I retired at age 65. Had a problem with skin cancer, skin cancer on my left cheek, periodically for many years. Went to, <coughs> went to Roswell Park in 1986. Went to Roswell Park, 1986. Roswell Park Cancer Institute at Buffalo. In 19. 81, I quit construction. Wait. Okay. <clears throat> I was baptized and joined the North Jackson Methodist Church in 1939 and have dug out the cellar and helped install the steeple and since worked on every project in between. Life has been good to us. We've had a two week tour of England and Wales, cruise to Alaska with family and friends cruise through the Panama Canal and Caribbean, 50th anniversary trip to Hawaii, across northern United States, always wanted to see International Falls, Minnesota, and Mount Rushmore, as far as North Dakota. Have visited many former presidents' homes, museums, two trips to Texas, and quite a few to Florida. Also went across Canada via train and cruised to Nova Scotia with Chud and Ellen. We feel much more comfortable nowadays traveling with them. Old age cuts down your confidence. In 2006, I began having problem walking. Local doctor called it dropped foot. He suspected a pinched nerve in my back or somewhere. After X-ray scans and so forth, nothing showed up. Eventually at Geisinger's in Danville, I was diagnosed with ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. There is no cure or treatment. There is an ALS association that loans you all sorts of things to make life easier. For example, a transfer. The one they loaned us is a smooth, shiny piece of plywood, two feet long, eight inches wide. You use it to slide from chair to bed, chair to car, and so forth. Surprising how helpful it is. So now in the summer of 2009, I have not been able to drive in over a year, or even able to stand. A walker is of no use anymore. The ALS Association has loaned me a wheelchair. Ellen's Church, courtesy of Mrs. Allen, loaned me a battery-operated scooter that I have used for months. It is a lifesaver. I have been measured for a four-wheel type battery-operated power chair, which will work outdoors as well as indoors, and will support me as my health deteriorates and my back muscles become weaker. 
I expect to have trouble with swallowing and breathing. I guess I thought that in my old age life would I guess I thought that in my old age my garden would get smaller each year. I would ride around on the lawnmower and just enjoy life. Didn't quite work out that way. So now, as I get eat, so now as I get weaker, Joan does most of my work, Scott does the heavy work, Ellen hauls us around, Lyle fixes things that break, and much, much more. The Lodge brothers and our church family keep us going. The neighbors bring in food, we enjoy seeing grandchildren, and now great-grandchildren. <clears throat> Life is still good.